Most reptiles in the hobby are completely harmless to you, but some of them are poisonous. Are any of them good pets? Well, yeah, there's actually five, and today we're going over the top five poisonous reptiles that actually make great pets. My name's Adam, this is Diamond, you're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Okay, first things first, venom versus poison. Let's just get it out of the way in 30 seconds so we can move on. We'll use this little graphic right here. Basically, you have to bite something poisonous for it to be dangerous to you or touch it, whereas something venomous has to bite you. A simplified version of it anyway. So we're not talking about venomous snakes, we're talking about poisonous reptiles. And some of them actually make really great pets. So let's just start it off with number five, most toads. Now there is one special toad that we'll get to later, but most toads have a toxin or a group of toxins that they secrete out of their parotoid glands or sometimes other places in their body. And without getting too technical, I'm not even gonna pretend like I can memorize them all. Bufotin, bufotoxin, bufo, bufo, Bufalitotoxin, okay, anyway, I'm not gonna get too sciencey here. There's a bunch of different types of toxin that toads can secrete, which can do something as simple as irritate your skin, irritate your eyes, do absolutely nothing, or kill your dog. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, it really could depend on the type of toad. So something like an American toad, if your dog bites it, it's gonna be a bad day. They're gonna probably need to go to the vet. If it's something like a um, cane toad and your dog bites it, well, your dog, you might not have a dog anymore. And then there's certain things like spade foot toads where nothing will happen most of the time. And I'll use spade foot toads as an example because these actually don't have paratoid glands or true paratoid glands. Many species of the American spade foot toads, which I talk about a lot because I have a pair and I think they're awesome. Also, they are small. A spade foot toad is gonna be rather small. But you can also get something, if you want a larger toad, something that is really big, but still very safe to keep, get something like a marine toad or cane toad. Now, these are monster toads. We're talking about sometimes nine inches. Like you have to hold them like this. You can't hold them like, you have to hold them with two hands. These poisonous amphibians sure are a handful. <laughs> and yes, I know I always ruin the list with an amphibian. I don't usually start it, but let's just start it off. Cause and like, I'm gonna ruin, I'm gonna really ruin this list with a lot of amphibians. But there are some reptiles. Now the cool thing is most toads, well a lot of them anywhere, look very similar. And a lot of them are pretty cheap to buy and cheap to keep. For example, spade foot toads. We'll use them again because they are very, very safe to keep. Even if you have dogs and cats around, don't let your dog or cat eat your toad for crying out loud, please do not do that. But I'm just saying there's like very little chance they're gonna die if something were to happen. But using spade foot toads as an example, I keep mine in a tote, in a container, because they like it very humid, it's just easier that way, and I haven't gotten around to making a really cool bioactive enclosure, although I am making some of them. You can see the ones behind me. Anyway, please hit subscribe if you haven't already, if you wanna stay tuned, because the content on this channel is going to expand past top fives, we're gonna do some really cool builds and stuff. Anyway, I will hold my spade foot toads with a bare hand if I need to move them to clean them to whatever, and I don't feel nervous about it at all. I don't put my hands in my mouth after because I'm not five. I am able to realize you should wash your hands after you touch any animal before you then use that hand to put something in your mouth. So anyway, number five, bufotoxin type toads, and let's just move on to something that I think is a little bit cooler. And this species is actually a dream of mine to keep, and I finally have a pair of them, dart frogs. Now we're talking about dendrobates. This is kind of a family that encapsulates and groups, what am I trying to say here? Dendrobates, there's a bunch of different subspecies of them, so you can get a bunch of different colors. I've got some Tinctorius azurus, which just means like they're the blue ones, basically. Uh, but there's other ones too, um, the Lukes, that's what I call them for short, the black and yellow ones. There's a bunch of different ones, and I think that they're amazing. The problem is they become extremely addictive, and as I'm making a really cool bioactive enclosure for my pair, I want more. Now, I've always loved dart frogs. I have a tattoo of one, it's unfinished. So it's been something I've always, like, loved. So what happens if you touch a dart frog? Well, if you go to the central South America and you grab a hold of a dart frog, you're gonna get sick most likely, depending on the species. Now, in captivity, what happens if I touch this dart frog? 
Well, actually nothing happens. Nothing happens at all because they get their poison from what they eat in the wild. They eat certain species of insects, ants, things like that, that have a type of toxin inside of them. And that just goes right into the frog and gets passed on to anything that might eat it or sometimes even touch it. And that's why back in the day, people would literally use them to dip arrows into or darts into and shoot it at prey or their uh, enemy, whatever. At the end of the day, they're using it to make their darts poison, which is where they got their name from. Now in captivity, they are completely harmless. You are not gonna get hurt by your poison dart frog. They eat things like very, very, very tiny insects, like fruit flies. That's generally what you're gonna feed them. I feed mine fruit flies. They've got a couple different types, smaller ones, bigger ones, but they're fun to watch. They are so much fun to watch eat. I love this species. I am definitely gonna get more species of them and you're gonna see some crazy bioactive builds on the channel so that I can kind of keep them, which is the point of having them in my opinion. They're not great for handling, even though they're not dangerous, they can still take in uh, toxins, detergents, oils into their skin from your hands because they are an amphibian, that's what they do. So I don't recommend handling them and they're small, they're fragile and they're fast. So the point of having them, in my opinion, the reason I have them is to observe. I want to set up a very cool naturalistic terrarium uh, and have them in there so that not only are the animals beautiful, which they are, they're diurnal, which means they're during the day. So they're in my office and I can just see them hopping around, eating insects, hopping in the puddles that I give them, and they're fun to watch. But also when I see something like this behind me, it's a piece of art to me. And I like looking at it, even though I can't really see the Chihuahua geckos in there all that much because they hide a lot. I just like looking at that, it's art to me. So yes, if you go to say Costa Rica and you find a poison dart frog, don't pick it up. Do not put it in your mouth. Well, don't put any frogs in your mouth, but definitely don't touch it. It's not a good idea. If you touch your dart frog in captivity, you're gonna do more damage to them in all likelihood than you ever will to you because they are well, almost 100% harmless in captivity. So anyway, cats out of the bag. Man, I love these dart frogs. You'll see more videos about them coming soon. Man, dart frogs are so freaking cool. I can't believe it took me this long to finally get one. Number three, something you definitely did not see coming, common garter snakes. Now, hmm, wait a second here. Common garter snakes are rear fang venomous, we know that, or if you didn't, now you do. But they're not poisonous, Adam, what are you talking about? Well, actually a wild population in Oregon is poisonous, and that's because they eat the rough skinned newt, which actually is venomous. And they have the exact same sort of venom as a blowfish, TTX. Here, just let me confer with my note to pronounce tetrodotoxin. It's the same thing it's in a blowfish, which is why you don't eat blowfish. Anyway, this uh, toxin that's in the newt gets eaten by the garter snake. The garter snake has adapted a way not to die when it eats this toxin. The toxin goes into that snake's liver and can remain there for weeks. Some say up to six weeks, some say four. Either way, if you're in Oregon, <laughs> and you're catching garter snakes, don't eat them because they might kill you. And yes, this type of newt can actually hurt humans quite badly, make them very sick or even kill them. So if you ate one of these garter snakes, I mean, it really like unless you're in a plane crash and all you can find is garter snakes somewhere in Oregon, then like I can't think of another reason why you'd ever stick one of these in your mouth. Except for a dare, which is actually how I know that these things can kill humans because people have eaten these newts and it has killed them on a dare. If someone double dog dares you to do something, if it's stupid, just like don't do it, it's stupid. Okay, so that's out of the way, we're kind of reaching here, but I will say common garter snakes actually make really great pets. And there are many garter snakes that make really great pets, like Chapella, Red Sided, Eastern, there's a whole bunch of different ones. So I think that these are awesome. I wanted to include them in the list because someone asked for poisonous reptiles and I had a really hard time finding some that are good pets because there's another type of snake called a keelback snake, which actually is venomous and poisonous, which makes it not a good snake for a pet because I don't recommend people keeping venomous snakes. So anyway, I had to really reach here and this is what I came up with. So I hope you appreciate the ingenuity. Hit a like for ingenuity. Is that even the right word? I am too dumb to do what I do. Common garter snakes are wicked. They are awesome. They're fun to feed. They'll eat things like fish and amphibians. You can get them onto rodents if you choose, but if you want an animal that doesn't eat rodents, snake that doesn't eat rodents, these are perfect. They're gonna take advantage of height. They'll take advantage of swimming space. They're fun to watch because they're diurnal. You can keep them in groups. 
Overall, garter snakes are severely underrated. Will you see them in my collection? <laughs> yes, you definitely will. Number two, Easter Newts. Okay, Adam, we've had enough with the amphibians. Well, then just click off now because the next one's an amphibian too. There's not a lot of poisonous reptiles, but amphibians, that's kind of like their go-to. Eastern newts are very easy to find. If you live somewhere, say where like I do, Southern Ontario, most parts of the US or most parts of the Eastern seaboard of the US, you might have even walked by them under a rock and not known. They're very easy to find. I find them all the time when I go herping or even just when I was a kid and I didn't even know what I was doing, just flipping rocks. You find them sometimes. Now, I wouldn't recommend touching them, although their toxin isn't so much that it would likely hurt you. I'm in fact saying not to touch them. I'm just saying if you accidentally touch them, it's nothing to like get super concerned about. Don't rush to call your crush to profess your love to them because you think you're gonna die, you're not. It's just gonna be awkward the next day. This is such a stupid example. Where are we going with this? Anyway, a very hardy species that is gonna be hard to find captive bred, but if you really, really want a newt and you want something that's cool because it's poisonous, Eastern newts are pretty easy to find and they're not that difficult to care for. Again, this is not a care guide. Don't get any of these animals because I put them on this list. Make sure you do your research first on the specific species before getting them. With that, let's move on to number one. Number one, the most unique of them all on the list, and one you might have heard of for very different reasons, Colorado River Toads. Now, Colorado River Toads do have a similar toxin to most toads. They've got bufotenin, which several other species do. But as far as I know, and correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I think this is the only species of toad commonly kept in captivity that also has a form of DMT. 5-MeO-DMT. Now, if you watch the channel, you've seen me drop a million JRE clips in here and you know that I'm a Joe Rogan fanboy, so I knew what this is already because I listened to that meathead talk about them a lot and talk about DMT a lot. I know people who have toads for that very reason because Mike Tyson talked about those toads. Now they have toads and they milk these toads. DMT is basically what is produced in your brain when you go to sleep. That's what makes you dream. It's also in most plants, but your liver kind of filters it out so you don't feel the effects of it. DMT is a psychoactive substance. So if you take the secretions of a Colorado River toad and you scrape it out onto say glass and you let it dry and then you were to ingest it, and by ingest it I mean to smoke it, which I do not recommend by the way, do not do this, then yeah, it has a uh, psychoactive effect, let's call it that. So it is very cool, and I say this because it's interesting. I am not advocating this at all. I am telling you not to do this. Don't lick your Colorado River toad because some guy at school told me I would get high, man. You're not cool, you're stupid, you're gonna get sick. But people do do this. I know a guy who has a Colorado River toad for this reason. And in fact, it's weird because in some states you can have them, but you can't have the secretions. So if you have the secretion, even on the inside of a container where you keep the toad, you are technically in possession of a controlled substance. This is a real thing. This is a real thing. It is silly, but that's it. There are places like Arizona where they are, occur naturally. You can collect up to 10 Colorado River toads with a simple fishing license, but if they determine that you collected them in order to get the secretion in order to sell or use yourself for smoking, then you are doing something illegal all of a sudden. Yeah, it's very complicated. So if before you get one, and I'll tell you why you wanna get one. They're very big, they're very cool. We're talking like seven inches. These are monster toads. They're really easy to take care of. Like most toads, they're basically insectivores. Again, do your research before you get one. They look kind of unique, and I think that they're awesome. And just big toads are pretty wicked. Now, the price tag's a little bit up there because of the thing that I told you not to do that people do, in some areas anyway. But either way, check your local bylaws, check your state laws, make sure you're doing nothing correctly, and don't lick your freaking toad. I can't believe I have to say this again. Okay, this was a bit of a longer one. We got a little bit sciency. I don't know, do you like this? Do you like when I go more into detail rather than just skimming the surface? Let me know in the comment section below. And while you're down there, please hit like, please hit subscribe, these videos, take a ridiculous amount of work for what you'd imagine. So if you give me a little bit of feedback like that, I really appreciate it. And a special thank you to all the Patreon supporters. You guys are amazing. For as little as a dollar a month, you get extra videos, you get videos early, you get to know about extra things in my collection, discounts on the merch. 
I send you mail sometimes, just like, anyway. For as little as a dollar a month, you can be a Patreon supporter too. I'd appreciate it. And because we do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Monday. Or no, it's Thursday, because today is Monday. So Thursday, I'll see you on Thursday. Thursday.